Welcome to Travel Market Life, your companion for industry insights and professional business development. Travel Market Life. Join us by webcast, video or podcast. Hello and welcome back to Travel Market Life. In today's episode, we're going to be looking at rethinking hotel performance revenue metrics. As a result of a survey in conjunction with Ideas RMS and The Caterer, we discovered that despite over 7 in 10, 71% claiming they have an integrated revenue strategy, also known as total revenue, which incorporates all hotel departments, still RevPAR stands at the number one metric at 30.6%, occupancy at 22% and ADR at just over 17% being the dominant metrics for measuring business success. Profit, a better reflection of a hotel's overall business performance, is used by 16.7%, with Trevpar with just under 5%. While for branded properties, Revpar is preferred at 42%, for independent regional hotels, occupancy is a predominant metric. We're going to be discussing metrics and performance with three leading hoteliers, Michael McCartan, VP EMEA from Ideas, Raymond Knotts, Director for Hotel Revenue Optimization for Central and Eastern Europe at Preferred Hotels, and Dario Artiola, the Senior Director of Revenue Performance at Radisson Hotels Groups. We're gonna be looking at what is an integrated revenue management strategy, how to have the right pricing strategy, the role of food and beverage and ancillaries in profit optimization and utilizing technology. Travel Market Life. Firstly, thank you, Michael, um, for uh, providing us with these details and insights into how hoteliers are thinking in the UK around performance metrics. Um, what are the key changes uh, that we're seeing across the UK and um, what can we put behind this trend? Hi, Ryan. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, yes. Yeah, so as you said in your introduction, um, RevPAR and closely followed by occupancy and ADR uh, still seem to be the, the key metrics that hotels are using to evaluate their performance. I think over 70% of hotels used one of those three metrics as, as the key indicator. Um, but interestingly enough, the fourth most common uh, indicator was, was profit or GOPAR. Um, and I, I suspect that over time, we're going to see that metric uh, starting to overtake or catch up and then overtake the other three metrics. And I think the reason it hasn't happened yet is because in order to do so, you need better access to data. You need more of an integrated um, data approach to, to, to um, ref report those metrics accurately and consistently and, and on a timely basis. But that's definitely a trend that we at Ideas see coming through. A lot of our Customers are looking to report on profit more than they do, more than they have done in the past, but even even we as a company are challenged in in trying to get hold of the data to to allow hotels to not only report um, their, their profit um, accurately but also to manage their pricing as a result of profit optimization. Do you think it was a surprise that there is such a difference between how group branded properties and independent hotel properties manage their metrics? Not really. I think, um, again, it goes back to, to access to data and you probably find that the, 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 the change in the groups have better access to data and therefore can um, measure the indicators that they want to measure, um, uh, as opposed to the independent hotels that uh, have probably don't have access to the same level of technology or an, an integrated ecosystem of technology and therefore have to resort to managing at the lowest common denominator, which is probably uh, occupancy, as we saw in the survey results. Well, let's speak to a couple of hoteliers now because we've got Dario and Raymond on the line. Um, one looking at it from a group perspective at the Gradison Hotels Group and Raymond looking at it from an independent perspective, Preferred Hotels. So it's great to have you both here. I mean, one of the really interesting things, if we start really from the performance over the last couple of years, um, ADR in particular has performed incredibly well. You know, rates um, have shot through the roof. Um, in particular, though, there's been challenges for some hotels 
um, about the guest perception of value um, and how that relates to pricing. Um, what, what challenges um, have you had to deal with there in particular? If we, we take it from Dario first, please. Yeah, actually, uh, thank you, Ryan, for, uh, for inviting me, first of all. Uh, let me also say that I fully agree with what Michael was saying. Uh, just maybe a little comment on that from a Radisson perspective. Uh, you know, the core business in the revenue, man in revenue management department, of course, is the revenue managers, you know, so they're really the guys that are managing the hotel. And you see that there is a change, you know, that actually Michael was mentioning, because before it was more like profit was one of the metrics on a corporate level. Now profit is actually coming more and more actually into a revenue management uh, level. So for me already, like calling them only revenue management, revenue manager, actually, it's a bit reductive because they should be like already called like commercial manager, you know, because they are now they have an overview on 360 degrees. But eventually in the future, they might become a profit manager, you know, and that's exactly in line with what Michael was saying. In terms of, in terms of pricing, to reply to your question, uh, yes, I mean, the, the ADR increase compared also to 19, which is now uh, actually not even anymore the, uh, the, 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 the real comparison because, you know, last year already was 20% above, you know, let's say in average compared to 19, and now we're doing... Uh, the industry, not the Radisson, right? The industry is doing uh, even even better. Uh, I believe personally that what we are seeing in the market, market is something uh, related to the fact that the customers are valuing, valuing more, let's say, timing, you know, and they're valuing more, you know, the experience. Um, uh, this blazer new segment that we see more and more often, you know, people working, you know, just traveling for work and maybe also enjoying, you know, the destination for the weekend. It's something that we see really often. We also dedicated, let's say, uh, offer for that. So for me, it's a really a perception on how the customers are valuing, let's say, their own time. You know, they tend to uh, to be maybe less price sensitive and maybe, you know, just uh, for something that be before they would have asked like two times before, you know, going uh, you know, in a certain direction. Thank you very much. And, and Raymond, I mean, looking and working with quite a, a large number of independent hoteliers, you know, Dario, um, you know, referred to that point around sort of like commercial management versus revenue management. Where are independent hoteliers when you're speaking to them about sort of the, the resources and the team skills that they have on site? Well, yeah, first, um, uh, thanks for having me uh, here on the on the podcast. Um, it's a it's a pleasure to be together here with all of you and yes um in regards to the to the numbers it's it's really interesting and it's different to the to the uh brand side uh like like uh, dario's telling us about redis and how, how things going um the the point the point with independent hotels is um a question of technical structure and how how they build their distribution set up in in our days um, so we're looking at things from a different perspective. Only maybe have was, was, was properties only a uh, limited number of, of uh, data throughout uh, the channels. But overall, um, we try to support properties uh, in regards to profitability. That's that's the point. Um, so it's a question which goes back then to to knowledge of uh, of the team on site and uh, technology in place, access to technology, and also the willingness of the hotel owner to invest in the technology, um, which can can also support profitability because uh, maybe they they have savings on 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 uh, salary side um, versus versus the one time or very low monthly fee for technology. So this is something which definitely contribute then to profitability, even though we, we don't focus on, on the numbers in first instance, um, when really looking at occupancy and, and uh, ADR at, at, uh, at this point. However, um, talking then about business mix, thinking of uh, online travel agencies and uh, commissions on the site, there are opportunities to really optimize profitability and reduce costs on the other side. And um, as Dario said, the, the question the question really is the expectation of the of the customer with increased ADRs and increased ADRs in first instance uh, come as a surplus. So uh, they are to a certain degree purely profit. Um, we have to deduct in our days the increased uh, salaries, uh, etc., and energy costs. So this is something which which uh, goes the other way. Um, but it's definitely a question then with increased ADR of 
how to maintain the customer expectation. It's not only the point of increasing rates uh, because of certain reasons, can be energy, can be salary increases, labor costs, whatever. Uh, but it's but it's then also a question of maintaining the customer expectations and ensure the the, the product is, is getting an improvement. Thank you. Now, Dario, there's a, a lot more importance being put um, on food and beverage and ancillaries in profit optimization. How far is Radisson on that journey to being able to incorporate that fully within sort of the, the metrics of, of performance of the hotel w- within the the, the, the with specific guests and, and and what they contribute. Yeah, actually, that's a, that's a great point. You know, which is linking perfectly with what we were just saying. Uh, to just take one of the Raymond points, uh, it's all about the capabilities. Of course, like big chains, you know, they have of course more capabilities also to test, you know, and to do something which is maybe you know new in the market, you know, maybe to use also some technologies which are disruptive, you know, and maybe can uh, bring additional revenue. Sometimes it can burn revenue, you know, because you can afford to test something which maybe an independent hotel cannot do. So starting from that, um, uh, in Radisson, we are working with external companies which are helping us to um, to implement, let's say, an F&B uh, man- uh, revenue management. So we are um, applying, let's say, revenue management strategy on the, on the F&B, implying uh, management of the menu in the restaurants, of the seats allocation, um, and we have already actually uh, quite successfully uh, tested and pilot like uh, five, ten hotels. So this is already now becoming like actually uh, something pretty common, let's say, Radisson. Uh, not all the hotels at the moment, you know, all the restaurants of the hotels are using these technologies, but they will. And um, the, the profit, let's say, in terms of uh, increasing revenue, it's up to 30%, which for the F&B, which we know, you know, by default, you know, it's not the most profitable, let's say, segment ever. It is already quite something, you know, and um, again, it's just that big chains eventually, you know, can bring something to the market, you know, as, a, of course, leaders. And then, you know, maybe, of course, the others will, uh, will follow. Now, Michael, I mean, both Dario and Raymond have mentioned this need for data and technology, um, backing up your point at the very beginning. Could you tell us what the role is of a revenue management system for hotels that are looking towards revenue, a total revenue and how the technology can really help uh, with that profit more than just room rates? Yeah, so I, I sound like a, a broken record some of the time because um, I always refer to data as the oxygen uh, technology can can achieve wonderful things, um, and it's particularly in an integrated ecosystem. But in order for that ecosystem to fully function, you need to uh, exchange data freely. And and our industry has a, a long, torrid past of of not having systems talk to each other. So uh, it's it's much better, of course, with the open open API movement, with where where systems do talk to each other, and that that, that free exchange of information happens. But the reality is we've still got a long way to go. So we still have a situation where little bits of data sit in pockets here and there in an organization. You know, food and beverage is not fully fully merged with the PMS, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And, and, you know, Dario and Raymond can talk a lot about that. But if our, our the, the successful deployment and utilization of full profit, profit optimization um, across the board at, at a general level is dependent on systems such as ideas getting access to data. We can achieve amazing things. We can really um, make profit optimization the, the gold standard for hotel operations, but it is dependent on us getting access to, to all of the data that matters. Um, and once we, once we once we do have that data, then then we really can make a lot of what we've been speaking about a reality. Now, Raymond, uh, in, in the data, we see that, you know, many more independent hotels don't have a revenue management system or don't even have a dedicated revenue department or revenue manager within their property. Um, are you seeing this change um, and how are they starting to sort of set up really robust, robust revenue strategies and incorporating a more integrated approach? Well, <laughs> Right. This is this is exactly the point. Uh, how to how to set up a strategy? Um, um, this is difficult for most of the independent properties because they don't have, as you said, they don't have a proper revenue manager or department on site. So here here it starts. Uh, and then talking about uh, the, the missing 
I would say the missing technology. Um, so so they losing out on on revenue or in selling opportunities, right? Uh, and and here here it really starts uh, and with with a global representation like preferred hotels and resorts or preferred travel group. Uh, better to say, um, we we support the properties to achieve global awareness um, and to help them to set up a proper proper distribution strategy uh, and help them with alliance partnerships to to get access to technology partners which would be hard to evaluate by by their own in in the global in the global structure nowadays i mean there is a lot of technology available uh, dario mentioned this as well um uh, and you could also fail on technology so we we or in between and take also a step to prove certain certain things and partners and technology to ensure once once an independent property is 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 pointing is choosing the, the partner uh, it's not going to fail then right so this is something which which helps but yes it's um quite often it's it really belongs then to full distribution uh connectivity uh to include also the sales department, the sales guys um, talking about contracting, how to do contracts in our days, um, technology, it depends on market, on segmentation, on business mix. There are a lot of those things in them for independent properties don't have a proper revenue department on site. One of the things that we're seeing from an independent hotel perspective is greater trust in technology and particularly in artificial intelligence and machine learning. And a consequence of that is that they are now able to deploy revenue management systems to automate the tactical pricing decisions for them, which means that they no longer have to spend hours and hours analyzing the, which price point to apply to the market. They can let that happen in the background and allow them to focus more on the strategy of their business. And, and Raymond will know, obviously, in an independent hotel, they don't have the luxury of big, big teams. So Often in independent hotels, one person is wearing many, many hats. To, so to free them up of the responsibility of having to do tactical pricing changes saves a huge amount of time for them and allows them to reinvest that time into more strategic activities. And as the, the technology improves and the automation improves and the decision-making improves, I think the trust levels are not only with, with independent hotels, but all hotels will will really um, mean that th that those decisions, those automated decisions, are going to be taken for granted, and, and in general, uh, hoteliers will have more time to do more strategic things. When you have also maybe franchise um, hotels and you have maybe other managed hotels like any other chain, uh, it's not uh, mandatory. Let's say that they know. Let's say they are uh, immediately affiliating with you in an RMS. So in a way. Sometimes, you know, also you have like hotels with an RMS, hotels with, they don't have an RMS. But, you know, on, in the base is that, you know, of course, there are owners behind, right? Each single hotel and everyone wants to make more money. So sometimes from our perspective, and we do that, you know, together with actually the, the ideas team. So we basically show the uplift of what, you know, what we are doing. And uh, actually to, to Michael's point, not only in terms of revenue, but also in terms of time they might save to do other stuff, you know, to focus on things that might be even more like profitable. So... Uh, from a chain perspective, you know, sometimes we also feel this, uh, um, uh, let's say, you know, um, situation where, you know, you have hotels consolidated with the system and, you know, others that you basically need to show which are like all the uplift you might have and uh, try to, you know, to convince to go in that direction. I mean, I was going to say, Dario, that was going to be my next question and was really sort of like you've got the technology, you've got the data, what ne more needs to be done? But it sounds like, you know, by having those data, that proof point, you're able to get that backing, that buy in and, and, and bring that cultural change that's that's needed. Um, I mean, one of the other key questions is. Um, it, is, is, is around sort of the, the, the role of RMS technology. Um, does it replace or complement the role of a revenue manager? Because it's often a fear amongst many people, it's replacing them. Um, but um, it sounds like strategy is absolutely essential um, for, for revenue management, uh, for a revenue manager when you have a technology that's able to deliver you that insight. But just to jump in there, I think Ryan, one of the I like to quote uh, George Patton. He uh, he famously said that poor tactics can destroy the best strategy, 
And, and I think from a revenue management standpoint, that is absolutely correct. So you can have the best strategy, but if you can't execute it on a, uh, the, the tactics of that strategy effectively, then your strategy is worth nothing. And uh, the, the automation and the, and the role of technology that, um, that uh, in delivering that automation is really supporting hotels in delivering a, their strategy more effectively. And uh, Michael, I want to want to want to jump in here. What what you said earlier um, for independent properties, it's it's really a question of of getting trust into technology, um, getting the confidence this is working properly. However, on the other side, uh, Ryan, as as you said, uh, maybe maybe the the revenue manager role is maybe disappearing or changing. I I think in in the future, yes, with the technology in place, the role. The, the function itself will change um, in our days. Um, um, I mean, don't want to want to want to focus too much on on this future technology, but it's it's all around us. So talking about AI, um, we heard quite a lot about ChatGPT and all these things. People obviously are very keen on those things, um, even in in independent uh, hospitality uh, area. However, we. We're still facing, or we still have the, the challenge that um, properties don't have a proper two-way interface in place. So, why talking about this future technology while not having having our basics done? So this is this is the challenge, and there is a huge gap in between, which should or have to be overcome in a very short time, obviously. So this is something, and then yes. Um, The, the, the role of a revenue, revenue manager will change in future. Now, I mean, one of the other areas, once you've got, you know, um, the revenue manager and uh, what is a revenue manager or a commercial manager, and you've got the systems in place. What we also found within the survey uh, was the importance of training um, and actually potentially the lack of training in this industry, particularly um, when there is very few official and certified courses in and around commercial and revenue management for hotels. Now, over half of hoteliers cite that they only take ad hoc hot courses in relation to revenue management as their main learning channel, 44% relying on self-learning, um, and only 25% are able to access perhaps supplier-delivered training. Um, Dario, I mean, what, what sort of programs do you have in place at Radisson uh, to, to help um, educate and upskill your team? And, you know, what do you think the industry most needs to be able to support the industry succeed here? Yeah, sure. That's a great. That's a great point. Uh, in uh, in Radisson, I mean, uh, especially for revenue management, uh, we have created what is called like the Club of Revenue Management, which is now actually has uh, five editions. You know, Madrid, Dubai, Shanghai, New Delhi. So, which is just centers dedicated to revenue management. So, as you as you might understand, we are also starting really also from from interns. So we give like a clear path. You know, uh, starting as a trainee. You know, where you can go, become a cluster revenue manager, associate director. So of course we are focusing a lot on uh, young and new generations, and therefore uh, a lot of collaboration with universities. So uh, in Madrid, for example, we are collaborating with uh, five universities, and you know we also like do trainings at this university. We do courses that we might you might see also on, uh, online sometimes with the pictures, and uh, most of the times you know basically they get to see what we are doing, you know, in terms of which are the main activities uh, we do in revenue management, and then you know they become our interns, and there you know they are growing. Uh, They're growing in the in, in the company. So, uh, in terms of uh, uh, how let's say we are uh, getting let's say these new resources, that's one of the way. But training, as you say, is essential. So I think we can, I can even quote ideas now because lately we have just released as a company like a G3 RMS essential certification, which actually has been done by all the revenue managers, and uh, it was not like um, uh, for granted. It was a really a uh, thoughtful exam. With a lot of questions, how to maximize the inventory, how to maximize the restrictions, how to uh, guide the system, you know, to apply the right strategy. So it was pretty tough, and uh, this is one of the way, you know, that uh, you are always constantly, let's say, you know, uh, basically monitoring what your team is doing by giving them, you know, say the right access to the to the materials. 
Raymond, independent hotels have so fewer resources and potential budget for learning and development programs. But, you know, if a group like Radisson is using a supplier delivered training from ideas as a certification, um, then obviously vendors are out there to be leaned on and, and to be, get that support in order to be able to optimize the use of these technologies. Um, I guess you'll also see that the lack of lack of um, sort of support in learning and development within independent hotels. Well, I mean, knowledge knowledge was always key, on, and it will always key in future. Um, so this is this is one thing what what will will stay. Uh, yes, we work also with with partners to provide uh, um, training opportunities, insights uh, to our to our member hotels uh, in the independent uh, area. Um, on on additional resource, um, yes, we as a company provide uh, trainings as well. Um, we use uh, CRS technology, of course, uh, where we where we offer training opportunities for member hotels. Uh, we we offer also uh, revenue uh, manager revenue optimization uh, trainings uh, as well. On the other side, uh, we we have a close co uh, collaboration with the HSMAI. Uh, so offering um, um, partnerships, trainings via, via this resource and strongly recommend um, for revenue managers to, to take advantage of the, of the CRM e-certification process, which helps, helps also quite, quite a lot. Michael, with Ideas Certification Programme, there also comes a level of account support and also consultancy to be able to actually help hoteliers get on top of their revenue management strategies and optimise their, um, their, their systems. Why is it so important to get that done from the outset? Uh, to get the ROI from a revenue management system, you need to ensure that there's um, the right level of engagement from from the user perspective um, so it's it's beholden on us to ensure that our users are equipped with the right skills and understanding to to get what they need from the system and it varies from an independent hotel to a to a chain as dario said you know they're very sophisticated at radisson they've got a, these these clubs around different parts of the the world um, really creating these in-house centers of excellence and we will support that versus an independent hotel that is going to be you know rely much more heavily on ad hoc uh, um, collateral that we support and we develop for for our customers but then we we, we supplement that with ongoing uh, client success um, and and usage behavior and, and understanding how different customers are are using the application to ensure that they are deriving the ROI that they expect from it. It's a selfish interest in, at the end of the day because the more the customers get out of our applications, the more they will continue to invest in us as a company. Thank you. Now, Dario, Raymond, love to hear a couple of pieces of advice that you would both give group or, and or independent hotels. Uh, trainings, you know, and starting with the, with the right approach, you know, is of course is the key. Uh, we have actually the beauty of a uh, uh, being, let's say, working with the young generations, with the guys that are super motivated, you need to show basically how, how this job is, you know, and what are the tasks that they're doing, the way of uh, involvement, you know, in certain things. And again, we are not we are not selling anymore as the revenue management role, even if it's the title might be there. But again, it's commercial because you have also a lot of interaction, you know, with other stakeholders, salespeople, with GMs. So it's also about, you know, you need to negotiate many of your ideas even, you know, you want to have in a certain hotel. So I think this also, it's um, uh, the only the only suggestion we can I can give personally just to maybe new revenue managers is to really get to understand, you know, what is the, the real task that the revenue manager does, you know, in this industry. And, uh, and if you, you know, if you like this kind of work, you know, then uh, just take some risks and go for it. Well, yeah, it's uh, definitely a question of knowledge. Um, how how to how to gain knowledge? Uh, how to improve? Rethink um, the the business uh, and distribution mix, which is in place. Uh, don't say no to any opportunity. Um, the, the worst thing what could happen you you fail. The worst thing what could happen is you you get a reservation. Um, um, as as we as we say here in Germany quite often was 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 a was a twinkle was a smile um so yeah it, revenue management and technology and, and independent sector is 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 rising it it's it's improving take the chance to to take advantage of the new technology uh, especially in the situation of uh, staff shortages in in most of the of the properties and uh, really ensure you have a 
proper strategy, a proper plan for the for the coming years. And Michael, finally, you know, any any sort of thoughts there on what Dario and Raymond has said and, and, and the support that ideas can provide? Yeah, uh, at, at Ideas, we like to um, promote the fact that it's uh, we've got solutions that are fit for purpose. So if we, if we sort of roll back the clock, maybe five years or so, um, there was probably one solution for that, that that had to be applied to every single type of hotel. We're in a situation now where we've developed solutions for budget hotels, for independent hotels, for resorts, for extended stay, for apart apart hotels, etc. So there's a, it's not one size fits all. It, it's it, there are specific solutions to meet specific market needs. So just because you tested or tried a revenue management system five years ago doesn't mean that you should close the door on the opportunity wonderful thank you michael dario raymond it's been a pleasure thank you for contributing to this episode today thank you thanks for thank, thank you. you thank you for having me for more go to travel market life the music sensation by zach nelson is reproduced under license from storyblocks travel market life is a Haynes Marcoms digital marketing agency production serving the travel and technology industries.